during Lent. I often think of it as three seasons in one. It's a time of quiet, of reflection, and then actual Holy Week itself is the really dark period. And then of course you have the rising of Christ himself. Liz now helps others facing the challenge of isolation by bringing them together for monthly tea parties. Losing your sight, you can become very, very isolated. And I think I felt that there was a clear choice. I was not going to let sight loss defeat me. I think I have that somewhere. There is a big difference between looking at something and actually seeing it. I see now from inside out, not from outside in. I just look and see things in a different way. Lent, for me, is a very enriching time, rather like me losing my sight. I mean, that's enriched my life. So I associate Lent with that period of uh, great sadness, great difficulty, uh, reflecting on how I, I was going to cope, um, but always knowing that there was the hope that it was going to be all right in the end. And I think it has certainly been all right in the end. It's opened my mind and my heart to the knowledge and the love of God. Because without him, I certainly couldn't be or do the things that I do today. If you visit this part of London in winter, you might hear the sound of people counting as London Zoo holds its annual stock take. Every creature has to be accounted for by zookeepers like Rob. Each year we need to take stock and count all the different species that we have here and how many we have of each individual. It's an important part of our zoo licence. That helps our European and worldwide stub books know exactly what stock's in what zoo so they can move animals around if they need to. And I think we also, we reassess that our, our value to conservation all the time. 
is something that actually has to happen not just once a year. We have to constantly be reassessing what we're doing and deciding exactly the right thing to do. Ever since I was about three, I've been really fascinated by animals, and so it's, uh, it's an incredibly self-indulgent job. What do you prefer, humans or animals? Uh, well, no human's ever bitten me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really like the giraffes. They're fantastic creatures. They have an incredible kind of presence about them. I think it makes you feel quite small when you work around the natural world and you, you realise just how complex it is and how understanding it is such a, such a difficult thing to do. I think it's humbling, I think, more than anything. You start to think about the relationship that we have as humans with the natural world and you see our, our impact and how to put right some of the wrongs that humanity has done to us. We live in a, a time of instant gratification, don't we? We want everything now and we're not willing to put the time in. It, it, it's totally different here, I presume. Yeah, it is. Um, when you work with the animals, and the more you get an insight into their psyche and what makes them tick, um, and then you also know how to make their life better as well, and more engaging and enriching. What have you learnt from the animals that you've worked with? I've learnt that individual animals can be very, very different, even you know, within the same species. You have to take time to build a relationship with them and build that, that bond of trust based on positive experience, really, making sure that the best things that happen in their life come from us. And uh, yeah, it teaches you to be patient and it teaches you to control your emotions and stay calm. And so, yeah, I suppose it's a, a lesson in life. Do you live out what you believe in your work here? I'd like to think that I get to use some of the patience and some of the grace and kind of the calmness. Uh, whether my colleagues would say I'm like that, it would be another question you'd have to ask them, but I, I'd like to think that I do, yeah. Oh